it's actually been quite an interesting period through COVID because I think what we've seen is um, um, a lot of, I would say, permanent behavioral changes where people actually move to consuming a lot more data. And that's, of course, come from lockdowns, but also, you know, working from home, educating from home, and, 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 and of course, being a lot of entertainment happening from home. So there has been some permanent uh, changes that, that have come. Um, that's, of course, put a lot of pressure onto the networks itself and has required that we, uh, that we had to step up and, of course, put a lot of money into our network and into our coverage, which we did. And I think that has stood us in good stead, uh, being able to, uh, to make the investments early up front. Uh, and last year, we spent something like $10.1 on, on our network uh, in South Africa alone. So, you know, I think, I think that, that's been an important part of the play, but also making sure that we could provide the universities with uh, heavily discounted bundles, uh, you know, to be able to cope with it. And then, of course, we've also provided a lot of free traffic uh, or free sites to our connection platform, you know, everything from emergency services to schools to universities um, to, to job sites uh, to the poorest towns getting discounted data and so on. And, and, and also free access to basic internet. So, you know, I think that's all played out uh, very positively. Shamil, the, the cost of providing the data has gone up. Can you give me a, a little more detail uh, around exactly that line item? I think one of the pressure points, uh, you know, and we've had this discussion before, Don, and you, you, you'll remember, but is the issue around, um, is an on spectrum availability. And, um, you know, we now, uh, what's it, 17 years since Spectrum was last allocated in South Africa. So, you know, it's, um, it's, it's been costly from that perspective. We have, government has given us access to temporary Spectrum, which has helped somewhat. Uh, but of course, to make big investments, you do need permanency around it. And you need to know that that Spectrum is going to be allocated so you can go and make the investment. So we're using it, uh, you know, wherever we can. So it is definitely helping, uh, but uh, but we, but could be more meaningful if if uh, permanently allocated, and further help to uh, drop the cost of uh, of producing a gig of data. What are you hearing hot off the press, so to speak, when it comes to the the spectrum uh, issue? August was tabled. Um, as, uh, you know, going full speed ahead with the uh, making spectrum available. We've got a new Minister of uh, Communications. What insight have you got to, to what is happening? Well, look, I think, I think firstly, from a government perspective, there's definitely a commitment uh, to, uh, to try and get on with the spectrum option. But, uh, you know, we are caught up in legal battles between ICASA and some of the players. Uh, you know, I think fundamentally, um, Telcom is not in the space where they want us to get Spectrum uh, because they have significantly more Spectrum than anybody else. And they keep talking about the duopoly, but the reality is that, you know, Telcom had a 100% year monopoly on being able to provide, uh, you know, uh, fiber. So remember the ingredients on, 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 on building a data network is threefold. It's, it's building of base stations uh, on the one side. It's the fiber that sits behind the base stations that has to carry the traffic. So behind every mobile network is a fixed network. And there, Telcom is a significant need, having had more than 100 years of, of, uh, of, of build. And so, of course, they've got the biggest fiber network. And the third party spectrum. Um, and so you've also got a lot of uh, telecom is significantly almost three times as much spectrum as the rest of the players. Uh, so delaying spectrum is of course part of their modus operandi, which they've been successfully doing for years now. And I think um, uh, you know I think uh, they again of course challenging the process, and I think that's quite disappointing because um, you know um, the uh, the reality is that we now need to get on with the spectrum option. So. The regulator is trying to sort the matter out and is, of course, trying to, to, to achieve a negotiated settlement. And, and, uh, and hopefully um, that will yield, uh, uh, you know, uh, dividends. If not, then, you know, we caught up in court. 
and you know, at, at best case scenario, you're looking at next year again. So it's just another year of delays. Are you hopeful that the, the change in the Department of Communications will yield better results overall for the environment? Well, I don't think it's a question of, of uh, uh, you know, of, of, uh, of course, we welcome the new minister and we thank the uh, old minister for, uh, for, for her contributions. Uh, I don't think the issue is really sitting uh, at the department at the moment. The issue, of course, the department has to fast track the uh, digital migration. And I think uh, there's already uh, been good momentum this year, more so than any other year. Uh, and, and the new minister will have to make sure that that digital migration is completed. Uh, because one of the arguments, of course, um, and, and, and this part we agree with, with Telcom, is that you know, the, the spectrum has to be available. It has to be, be made available soon. So I think that that part, um, you know, is, is important. So the digital migration has to happen so that when the spectrum auction eventually happens, that spectrum can immediately uh, be, uh, be allocated to the industry. So, you know, I think that's a, that's a priority, but the, the court case uh, is between the regulator uh, and, and of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, telecom uh, and, uh, and other players. So, so effectively, you know, that issue needs Everybody's to Everybody's waiting. You've got to wait for the kind of project to unfold. Reason. Shamil, talk to me about your new super app in partnership with Alibaba, really now becoming a banking play, provision of loans to the broader environment, and, and many saying, actually, you know, stepping up where that uh, legacy banking infrastructure doesn't exist across the African continent, you're there to, to fill the gap. I think, I mean, of course, today we have a very successful platform already in, in, in our M-Pesa uh, platform across, uh, across our markets. And, and today we process something like $25 billion of transactions per month. Across um, across our uh, various markets through the, through our Mpesa platform, we have over 60 million customers buying a financial service product from from us, um, and, and so you know I think we've got a very good platform to build from. Our financial service business in South Africa has also um, you know grown significantly. Uh, it's now you know generating uh, 2.5 2.6 billion rand of revenue per year. Um, and, uh, you know, the opportunity in South Africa was for us to look and say, we haven't implemented the Mpesa platform. Uh, uh, you know, how can we then look at, you know, putting in the latest and greatest technology? And I think that's where the partnership with Alipay uh, comes in. Uh, but it's also a, a good window into the future of what Mpesa is going to look like as we try and capture more of a world that's going towards more uh, e-commerce. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we didn't have legacy to deal with in South Africa, so we could implement the full platform. Um, I don't think we replace the banks. I think the uh, smart banks will look to partner with us, to be honest, uh, because we're not looking to be the bank. What we are doing is the app is a lifestyle platform, where effectively, you know, you'll be able to come onto the, uh, to the platform, link your car, transfer money into your store value, pay all your bills, but also have the ability to go shopping. Uh, and you'll be able to shop with, uh, from anyone from, from macro to game to, uh, to builders warehouse to clicks and, and all the clicks brands to, to, to all the adcon uh, uh, brands and so on. And the level of personalization that the platform can achieve, I think, uh, becomes, uh, becomes quite encouraging. And then within that, there'll be lending opportunities 